Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is Sean Sweeney here from the Jane Goodall Institute. Uh, we're very glad to have you uh, joining us today for our Gombe 55 webinar with Lilian Pintea, uh, our Vice President of Conservation Science. Uh, we're looking forward to um, picking his brain a little bit about uh, Gombe and his work there. Lillian, do you want to say hello? Hello. Um, the way we're going to do our time today is uh, just kind of going back and forth with some questions that we came up with uh, for Lillian about his work at Gombe and the Jane Goodall Institute across um, the Congo Basin and actually um, nearly the entire chimpanzee range. Um, and uh, we'll Lillian will touch a little bit about Gombe in general, but probably speak most specifically about his own work uh, with Gombe. So, and then um, if we have time at the end of our session today, we'll go ahead and take some questions from um, our participants. Um, if you would like to submit a question for the webinar, feel free to use the chat box in our uh, webinar interface. Um, we'll uh, go to those, as I mentioned, towards the end of our time together. So Lillian, just getting started, um, we kind of wanted to know a little bit about your background with Gombe and when you were doing your graduate studies, why you chose to study at Gombe and um, also your work with JGI too, what, what brought you to JGI and just a little bit on your history. Right. Um, well, I really loved, um, thanks to my dad and numerous hiking trips when I grew up in um, Moldova and Eastern Europe, I really loved wilderness and um, working with animals, observing animals. So I was really impressed by a book called Serengeti Shall Not Die by Grzimek, um, and started dreaming about working in Africa. I went to a, a, my, I got my master's degree in biology from University of um, Moscow in Russia. And um, start using satellite imagery around um, maybe more than 25 years ago. When I came to the United States in 96, immediately um, in 97, I already started working in Africa. And um, uh, I worked at the World Bank uh, mostly in advising on the GIS and mapping projects uh, over the three years. And I felt that I really would like to learn how, what does it mean to be a scientist um, in terms of bringing science to conservation practice. So I was looking for different graduate programs and Gombe uh, and chimpanzee research at Gombe just was one of the possibilities which I took it. So can you talk a little bit about um, once you got started with your graduate studies that involved Gombe, what, what that entailed? Right, so what I did, um, I um, complemented uh, the longest uh, chimpanzee behavior study which we have going at Gombe. Um, I have uh, my previous uh, previous students and colleagues uh, already digitized more than 400,000 observations, which goes all the back to the uh, 1960s and 70s. What I did is I complemented this uh, behavior data set with how habitat changed as detected by historical aerial photos and also satellite imagery, and combine them together into a system, into a mapping system called GIS, which allows us to store, manage, relate, and analyze uh, any geographic data. Cool, so that means that the behavioral research that Jane herself started in the 60s and you know continued through today People have been tracking the chimpanzees and covering their covering their behavior with their data monitoring. You were able to complement that with um, maps that showed how the habitat has changed over time. So, you know, is the is the hope with that that the behavioral data can be paired up with the habitat change and certain yeah. conclusions can be drawn from it? Well, um, we live in a geographic world, right? So once you, inter you put um, chimpanzee data um, spatially and once you integrate it with habitat data spatially, it opens 
huge amount of possibilities to relate it to distribution of people, how the people are using land, how the chimpanzees are using the forest, how the forests are changing, how the climate is changing, how the hydrology is changing. So um, it opens vast possibilities to reintegrate some of the Gombe research into the land, larger landscapes and ask questions which go way beyond uh, chimpanzee behavior um, and related it to issues from uh, understanding how human and, and chimpanzees can coexist and share the land to what is the impact of climate change and what is the best way to adapt both for the chimps and the people. Awesome. So um, thinking about Gombe as a research site and sort of um, where it is in Africa, um, what are some of the biggest challenges you and other researchers face in working at Gombe? Right. Well, um, I have a map right here uh, which I wanted to share with you. And this is the first map which was published by National Geographic. It's the first view of Gombe from very high resolution satellite imagery uh, coming from the Icona satellite back in 2001. And you could see that Gombe, it's a very small park surrounded by an ocean of humanity, basically. Villages, farms, um, and a lot of uh, other human land use. If you go next slide. Um, to put Gombe's size in perspective, um, so I overlaid Gombe National Park, which is here in, in uh, light green, over Manhattan and uh, uh, Central Park. And you can see that it's a pretty small park. It's only 35,000 uh, square kilometers or 3,542 hectares. Um, so this, the size of Gombe and the shape of Gombe is one of the major challenges uh, in conservation biology practice and science in order to manage uh, uh, the, the, the potential threats to the park. Another challenge which we have, of course, is that um, Gombe is located in western Tanzania, the border with Burundi, and the place has been experiencing one of the highest population growth uh, over the last 60 years. We're talking about 4.8 percent a year. This is one of the highest growth in Africa even. It's also a very marginalized and impoverished area, so the human factor uh, is a big challenge. Um, finally, the political dynamics, the changes in, in, uh, in people's priorities, and, and uh, uh, this is also a challenge which basically keeps us busy and the conservation work make, uh, never done, basically. You always have to be, uh, be focused and alert. Mm -hmm. So um, on the flip, flip side of that, what do you think in terms of JGI's work at Gombe, um, your own work, the work of our partners, what do you think of, have been some of our greatest successes in our recent past at Gombe? Well, if we go to the next slide, um, I love this slide because in one hand it shows, again, the challenges. Um, what you're looking here is you see Gombe National Park, uh, dark green, surrounded by um, different uh, village land use, land uses, and also distribution of footpaths and roads, and all the dots which you see there are individual houses, which we mapped from 40 centimeter satellite imagery. And you can see the challenge, right? Um, but also, this is a, this map uh, gives me a lot of hope because this map is a product of many years of uh, GGI work with communities. And this is a final land use plan which was approved and developed by the local communities, uh, facilitated by GGI, which established village forest reserves among of, with other forest uh, and land users which connects Gombe now to other chimpanzee populations uh, which still exist in Burundi. Uh, as you could see, Gombe is connected to this uh, corridor 
of village forest reserves, which basically together with Gombe creates a network of protected areas where chimps um, could um, start using outside the park. Another example, if you go to the next slide, is that this map, it's not just a map, it's a living document and actually it's, uh, the community is uh, embracing it and it's actually implementing it. So for example, let's zoom into one of the village, this village forest reserves, uh, in this case it's Kigali village, and this is how the, the the forest reserve looked back in 2005 when we just started the land use planning work and the forest uh, reserve restoration work. You can see the um, degraded hill, hills. All those hills used to have forests. You see scattered trees. You see a lot of farms. Uh, some of them abandoned, some of them in use. Um, you can see the stream at the bottom of the valley uh, full of sediments. Uh, uh, from all the erosion, and look at the next slide. This is how Kigali Village Forest Reserves looks now in 2013, and the, the latest 2014 and 2015 imagery shows that the reforestation is continuing. Um, huge improvement. Next. And we see similar patterns happening in many village forest reserves in the landscape. For example, again, this is how the village forest reserve looked like in Kadongo back in 2005. And this is how uh, the forest reserve looked in 2013. So this is pretty uh, exciting uh, changes, which I'm very proud of. Great, okay. Um, so, um, you mentioned in talking about this that um, JGI has a conservation action plan for Western Tanzania. Um, can you talk about the conservation action plan as it relates to Gombe? Um, absolutely. Um, but before that, let me share you a couple of more uh, slides. Um, can you go ne next? So. One of the advantages of working with the Jane Goodall Institute for now more than 10 years is that it allows you to see uh, changes personally and, and put it in, in kind of personal context. 10 years, it's, not a, it's a lot of years for, for maybe an individual, but it's a limited amount of time uh, for a landscape or a forest. And seeing changes, it's truly remarkable. So for example, in 2001, um, I was invited by Tanzania National Parks for the first time to help map the boundary of Gombe National Park. Um, because of the past conflicts with local communities and the way how the park was established back, back in 1968, um, the park was never mapped. The boundaries was, were always disputed, disputed. So we found ourselves on this hill and um, you can see how degraded is uh, surroundings. And we're trying to decide if this is right here to put uh, a boundary. Next. Well, in 2014, with the Google Street View team, I found myself on the same hill, and I didn't recognize it because, as you could see, uh, there is more trees, there are more trees, and this is part of those village forest reserves, which I have been just talking before. Next. I'm also very excited about GGI work um, is that, at least personally, I'm very excited about that a lot of science and technology tools which have been bringing to the table um, bring, empowers our main stakeholders, which are local communities, to be more fully participants in, um, in protecting their own natural resources. So even, for example, this picture of exploring uh, Gombe boundary now, everyone in the world can take a tour using Street View by, by, and, and following the boundary. Next. I'm also incredibly proud of the work which GGI did with adopting mobile technologies. Um, and this is the local communities being uh, trained how 
So use the mobile tools such as smartphones and, and tablets and uh, a free app called Open Data Kit uh, or ODK Collect to monitor, record, and report what's happening on the forest reserves. Next. This is just examples of the of the imagery which they have been collecting of the of the years. Uh, you can see that they in the right they have been locating chimpanzee nests. This is a chimp nest on Panda, um, uh, sorry, Mtanga village, which is outside the park. Um, you can also see the the threats. Uh, for example, you see the the cartridge, the, the, um, the sawmill, uh, which are scattered, you know. Uh, in the in the landscape, and uh, including a wildlife trap, which have never been recorded before. Next. And this mobile tools again has been just spreading to other GGI projects. This is uh, the same technology and uh, forms have been uh, and apps used in Uganda with uh, our community partners and our uh, national forest authority partners. Next. And our partners in research, um, here is Ugala Primate Research doing uh, our main, one of our main partner in Masito and Ugala and Greater Mahara ecosystem, um, studying and monitoring and serving chimpanzees outside protected area in Tanzania and also using the same technology. So this is all a uh, couple of uh, technologies which, again, makes me very proud uh, what GGI uh, had been accomplishing. Next. So when it comes to our approach, uh, these technologies and the results, they are tools, you know, they're basically tools. And, and the framework in which we're applying them, as you said, is conservation action planning. The reason why conservation action planning is so important is because one of the early challenges which we have is Make, keeping track of how our funding and conservation strategies, such as, let's say, community interventions, and um, are related to our mission and to our conservation goals, which is uh, protecting chimpanzees and their habitats. Through conservation planning, it allows us, not only internally within DJI, but with our major partners, to sit down and going through a very structured, transparent process, which, which you can see it here, it's an adaptive management process, which means that we can bring the best science to the table, but not wait until the best, more science is available. We can still use expert opinion, but treat our management strategies as hypotheses. And as we collecting data to monitor our impact, we can adapt um, to uh, basically new information and new challenges. Um, this helps us be much more organized in using a uh, few conservation dollars in order to leverage it and achieve the maximum conservation impact. And the, pr and the methodology which we're using is open standards for the conservation of biodiversity. Um, it's a, uh, you, you can go next and uh, you, you can just uh, click and show basically there's a variety of organizations which have been adapting this. The Jane Goodall Institute had been an early adapter, one of the first, I think, NGOs adapting open standards in Africa, going back to 2005, 2006. Um, and uh, I guess another important part about open standards that it's n the focus is not on developing a document or a plan. The focus is on planning. So it's a process, it's a living process uh, which gets adapted. For example, the, Jeng, the, the Gombe uh, Conservation Action Plan was developed between 2006 and 2009, but recently, in 2015, in March, we just finished a review of it. Um, so it's a living document, it's a, it's a process. So um, how does Gombe fit into the conservation action planning that JGI has been doing for Western Tanzania? Well, Gombe was the first site um, or landscape where the CAP methodology was applied and tested and adapted to the, adapted to the conditions in Africa. In, uh, in Africa. 
But going back, um, when you do when you do conservation planning or you do any conservation work, um, you have to understand what you're trying to conserve, and you, in this case, chimpanzees. And you you have to understand what does it mean to be a chimp. You know, you also have to understand what are the factors which help chimpanzee survive and be viable as an individual, as a population, as a community. So most of the time, we don't see chimpanzees in the wild. Um, chimps are very aware about people. Um, you, you see maybe nests, but you don't have an opportunity to actually observe and learn what does it mean to be a chimp. Well, Gombe, of course, is the longest chimpanzee research site in the world, and we have huge amount of data starting from individual physiological molecular level to the landscape and the long-term perspective in terms of how chimpanzees and habitat and relationships are changing. So Gombe has been very important in providing the baseline data which allowed us, for example, when we scaled up and did the chimpanzee uh, National Chimpanzee Conservation Action Plan in Tanzania, uh, we used Gombe data together with some data from the, another long-term research site from Mahali to basically build a population habitat viability model. And that data basically drives then, what is it, you know, drives our conservation decisions. That's amazing. So in coming up with the conservation decisions and developing um, our conservation action planning, um, what have been some of the biggest influences you think have been um, while working on the CAP, while working on that work? I think we have been um, one of the pioneers in, in bringing uh, geospatial technologies to the work of uh, conservation planning. Um, this including a number of tools, such as GIS, which I mentioned before, but including high-resolution satellite imagery. Another uh, contribution which has been quite significant is how you bring human livelihoods into the conservation planning. You know, um, and, and GGI and partners' work on, on applying open standards in Africa, I think, contributed towards Towards that understanding, how to properly reflect and integrate people's livelihoods into the into the conservation. I would say that um, our partnership with the Nature Conservancy early on um, helped us sustain, uh, uh, helped us a lot again in bringing the latest um, plan, conservation planning science and practice to this job. And, uh, and partnerships in general with other, like Frankfurt Zoological Society, have been essential in not only developing these caps but implementing them. So the fact that we are all um, by have a buy-in into this plan uh, and it informs the way how we fundraise and implement and design and implement our conservation projects and the way how we're working together and coordinate has been um, a major achievement. So you mentioned in um, a lot of this work that um, we involve local communities. Um, can you talk a little bit more about some of those ways? I know you mentioned forest monitoring and, and that sort of thing, but from the, the conservation perspective as well, what are some of those ways that we involve local communities? If you go to the next uh, slide, uh, I, I love this um, next slide because um, what you see here is uh, villagers from, um, I think it's Bumbango or Chankeli village, uh, sketching on the, gr on, on the sand, on the, on, on, the, on the ground, the location of the uh, village forest is there, uh, it, it, and how it relates to the larger land use plan, which they have been working on. And you see the village forest reserve kind of is marketed there by those leaves which have been placed on the ground. Well. That location of the village forest reserve actually has been informed by GIS analysis of historical aerial photos of where the forest used to be going back to 1947 
um, how the landscape changed, where the people were, where is the right place to, to put the forest. So it not only helps chimpanzees, but also watersheds and water sources. Yeah, and, uh, and that's why I have the biggest impact on, chim on, on people livelihoods as well. So a lot of work has happened before um, getting to that map on the dirt. But then the Jane Goodall Institute is, didn't, is facilitating the process. This is a villagers' communities process in terms of managing their the land. So as, fa as facilitators, we're providing access to this information, we're providing access to technologies, but we are listening, and we're listening to their concerns and needs, and we're listening to their local knowledge as well. So in this case, um, they prefer to start with a map on the ground, um, and it helps, but then that map was informed and integrated with the technologies, and then the final map on the from the ground has been georeferenced with proper GPS technologies and brought back into, G into GIS. So I think the major part of how we work with the local communities, again, is that we truly respect their rights to the land, their rights, and, and, and we truly respect, in addition to science, also their local knowledge, and we're making a lot of effort in adopting technology to the right level and integrating the local knowledge with the science and technology. We are respecting the, the um, de decisions on village land use plans, and we empower them with whatever technology or science or uh, capacity or training, uh, we empower them to implement those plans. Um, and, and, um, and again, finally, what I mentioned before, the role of GGI is as a facilitator. Um, and not, uh, we're, we're basically, we're facilitating this, this process. So, um, with that work that has been done with land use planning and that sort of thing, does that, do those efforts connect or feed any of, us, of JGI's other efforts with communities around Gombe, like addressing health concerns or sustainable livelihoods, those sorts of things? Well, the, um, the way how conservation action plan uh, goals have been designed in the case of Gombe is that they directly connected to protecting uh, ecosystem functions such as water quality, which people livelihoods depend on. So um, by conserving forests, by conserving this resor forest resources, there's a lot of benefits which communities are getting in return, and I think that the people see the difference. Um, with increasing climate, with, with the changes in, in climate, um, the region is predicted to experience extreme droughts or extreme um, uh, rainfall. This means that if you have steep watersheds, as you saw, uh, people live in around Gombe. Without the forest, uh, the vulnerability to erosion and landslides and all sorts of uh, disaster is just huge. And I think people realize that they've seen an increase and they truly have been um, interested in reforestation to, as, a, as a watershed management tool. Um, yes, yeah, so I think this is a, a supporting the ecosystem function, supporting land uses that in one hand allowed people to have farms, allowed people to have grazing areas, but at the same time trying to maintain the ecosystem functions so the landscapes are working uh, more or less properly uh, is a major uh, focus here. Great. So um, we kind of talked about your background with Gombe and the work that you're doing today um, in that region of Tanzania. What I was hoping we could do now is come back um, a little bit to the science that's going on at Gombe and talk about the, the future of Gombe. So um, what I'm wondering is if you can talk a little bit about um, where you see the science of Gombe going in um, in the near future. 
um, things. This is this is a great question. I mean, first of all, I hope that the long-term research at Gombe continues. Um, Gombe is already the longest chimpanzee research site in the world, and there are numerous advantages of uh, keeping this going, partially because, simply because uh, chimpanzee um, are long-lived animals, and there are so many things which we're just learning by looking at the long-term data sets um, that we we're not aware if we have just a, a small window in time um, to chimpanzee lives. Second, if, if you go to the next slide, which I prepared, I'm very excited about um, continuing the traditional, the way how we have been collecting the data, but improving our efficiency um, in bringing and taking and leveraging some new uh, science and technology tools. So I just uh, was at Gombe a few weeks ago, and this is a, a picture of an app which we're testing in Gombe right now, uh, which will allow the field assistants collecting daily data, which right now are totally paper-based, to use uh, mobile tools and um, which, which has allowed them to collect data digitally, um, which will allow not only for a much faster um, data collection, but also the data will be immediately integrated into a database and available, um, and, uh, and the time and the cost of, of um, uh, collecting, storing, managing, analyzing the data, using it, sharing, collaborating with others would be substantially reduced. So this is a, uh, I'm very excited about that, and I'm looking forward to to see how Gombe uh, is taking is is embracing this new cutting edge technology. Um, if you go to the next stage, I'm also this is I'm also excited about Gombe to add uh, to to take a full advantage of the detail habitat and ecological data and tools available and, 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 and truly um, ask questions about conservation, which has conservation and ecology, landscape science, uh, landscape ecology uh, implications, um, which go beyond chimpanzees. So, uh, for example, what you're looking at it is a two-meter digital terrain model, which we just received. Um, this was developed in collaboration with Digital Globe. It's derived from 60 centimeters um, satellite imagery. And what you see here, uh, those bumps on the imagery, those are actually the actual tree heights um, and the, the, the heights of the houses from, from the field station, which we can map now. Um, so there is huge amount of information which can be used um, to add, again, our behavioral research, but also to ask ecological questions. Um, there are not many places uh, in Africa in the, in the forest which have such type of uh, data, data sets available. The next uh, question, the next slide, is another example of technology. Where, uh, I, I was there with conservation drones, um, our partners, uh, to explore at what extent new technologies such as UAVs uh, could contribute some of the data layers for, again, on their uh, research. And um, we established that there is a huge potential, again, for the UAVs to bridge the data which our field assistants are collecting on the ground with the satellite data coming from the satellite. So this is a very exciting, again, example of how the new technologies could could uh, contribute towards the research. That's amazing. Uh, I think the drones could at least be helpful in shortening the length of time it takes to find the chimps in the park, right? Potentially. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not sure about that one. I think, um, uh, but but the drone, <laughs> but this. Um, uh, we, we, we were able to detect chimpanzee nests mm -hmm. on the drones, which is extremely important when 
you survey chimpanzees uh, because finding a nest is one of the most challenging uh, part of the surveys. So finding nests uh, from the drones could significantly improve our capabilities to find, uh, uh, to, to, to do better surveys. Great. So part of the reason why we're gathered is that we're um, this week celebrating, uh, starting our celebrations for the 55th anniversary of Jane's research at Gombe. So JGI, um, well, Jane, Jane's presence in, in Gombe and subsequently JGI, um, we started out as um, being really focused on the science, um, but as we know, as Jane discovered how endangered chimpanzees are, um, our focus switched um, to conservation. So um, one of the questions that um, we've heard a lot is how the behavioral studies, and you've touched on this a little bit in our conversation, but how the behavioral studies that have been going on now for 55 years relate to the conservation work that JGI is leading, not only in in, um, in and around Gombe, uh, but now across the Congo Basin, and I know there's some efforts that you have with other partners in other parts of Africa as well. So um, can you kind of speak to how the behavioral research connects with the conservation work? Absolutely. Um, as I said before, without Gombe, we have, and without other long-term research sites, um, we have no idea what does it mean to be a chimp. We don't understand. We, we cannot appreciate the importance of social and ecological factors in, in shaping the viability of uh, what does it make to be a chimpanzee community or population to be viable. So in this perspective, the, all the discoveries um, and continuing discoveries uh, at Gombe have a direct impact uh, on um, conservation, not just Gombe, but also elsewhere. Um, uh, for example, if you go to the next um, to the next slide, um, you're, I already showed you the map of Gombe over the in uh, the Central Park. Here's an overlay of chimpanzee um, range over the U.S and just to show you the, the scale and the challenge of GGI's mission to protect 85% of chimpanzees and their habitats in Africa, just to put it into, into a kind of geographic context. It's a huge challenge. There is no way we can have deep understanding. We can survey chimpanzees everywhere the same how we did it in Gombe. But what we can do, we can build models and, and, um, and, and, and design tools which take advantage of detailed knowledge which we have at Gombe and work to scale up that knowledge and, and, and work to protect the chimps elsewhere. Um, so this is one example. So for example, if you go to the next slide, one of the projects which um, we're working with a number of partners is funded by NASA, uh, with University of Maryland and other partners is um, applying some of the similar tools and some of the similar data as we applied in Gombe and in Gombe the conservation action plans. But now, uh, thanks to the, advantage, the advances in, in satellite technology and image processing technology, modeling, cloud-based um, uh, modeling, we can do that now for the entire chimp range in Africa. Uh, and we can do it not just uh, once in five years, we can map it every year. Uh, so here is, for example, um, an example of a chimpanzee habitat health index, which Jane Goodall Institute, with the funding from NASA, uh, is developing as a decision support system. And that will be, uh, we already mapped chimpanzee habitat every year from 2000 to 2013. And the plan is that every year we'll be continuing producing this habitat health layers to share with the world and inform um, what is the status of chimpanzee habitats and how our conservation efforts, what is the success of our conservation efforts. Um, I think the impact of Gombe also, it's important also to mention that uh, many studies now show that 
having boots on the ground is one of the most important factors in, in achieving conservation success. So just physical presence of researchers in Gombe uh, already puts Gombe not only on the map, but also significantly contributes to uh, the protection of chimpanzees in Gombe and in, in that region. So that is also another important contribution of uh, long-term research um, to conservation. And finally, um, what happened to Gombe is happening to many, many other forest patches and habitats around Africa. Um, what are the, the solutions, lessons, lessons learned, technologies, everything which we have been doing in Gombe trying to understand how chimps and, and people can coexist in this um, and, and do land use plans which can support both people and chimps are extremely important and relevant. Uh, and I think we're going to see that increasingly more and more across the entire chimp range. So that, that, that uh, it's extremely important for conservation as well. So Gombe has a definitely behavioral research contribution, but also a conservation story and contribution uh, to saving the species as a whole. I have another example at the end. Um, again, if you go to the next slide, um, in the past, when we start working with, when I came um, in 2000 as a PhD student at Gombe, one of my first tasks was to acquire, process, and do mapping, to map how the habitat changed from satellite image. I could only work with one or two or three satellite imagery. Now, thanks again to the advances in technology, uh, both in computer technology, but also remote sensing and web technology, we can process thousands and thousands of imagery at a time. So it allows us to start focusing not on mapping, but on using the mapping information to support conserv improve conservation decisions. So for example, we are uh, an early partner of the Forest Watch, uh, Global Forest Watch platform, which has a goal to democratize access to the forest change information. And as part of that, um, it helps us, we're using the same uh, data, not only for the chimpanzee habitat health, but if you go to the next slide, um, we're using this information and combining with our experience, again, which goes back to Gombe, uh, working with communities, we're designing a mobile app where citizens, local communities, rangers, protected area uh, officials, Citizens could download it for free in, a, in, a, in a, hopefully in a, in, a, in a couple of months and be able to receive deforestation alerts on the mobile device and be able to actually go on the ground and, and find potential deforestation alerts and report their findings, including pictures. So basically, it allows to scale up and bring more boots on the ground uh, guided by science, guided by technology, but in order to have more presence on the ground to see how the habitats in the forest are changing. Some pretty incredible things there for not just uh, forests like uh, Gombe, but it sounds like across the whole chimp range and, you know, would apps and technology like that those, those sorts of things are available even to people anywhere in the world, right? Like Global Forest Watch and... Absolutely. So, so um, while, while we bringing our experience and interest in applying these tools for chimpanzee uh, habitats uh, in Africa, these tools, uh, Global Forest Watch platform is global and it works anywhere. Um, so the same, these tools also will work pretty much anywhere. Yeah, so it, truly it's an example of where some of the tools and technologies uh, which we have been developing in Africa, like Roots and Shoots community mapping platform and, and, and tool can be scaled up and used uh, in many other regions. Great.
So um, we're coming to the end of our time. What, what we wanted to do was um, take some time now to give you an opportunity to share anything else that you might want our uh, viewers, listeners to, uh, to know about Gombe as we're celebrating this, this anniversary and um, everything that's going on there. Is there anything else that you'd like to share or that we missed in our conversation? I guess I, I just want to um, to share that for me, Gombe was this incredible place, which it's not only amazing beauty and diversity and rich history and you know when you walk in Gombe, it's like walking in one of the James books. Um, you see chimps, you see uh, individuals which uh, became alive. Uh, from Jane's books. Um, so it's an incredible experience pers at the personal level. But Gombe, it's also, I think it's important to, under to remember that Gombe is also, it's one of those sites which we should go back for inspiration, not only to understand what is our place in nature, simply because chimpanzees are our closest living relatives, right? So that is already an, an, an extremely important experience. Um, but also, Gombe is also the place which we should go back to inspire conservation efforts, but also to um, assess our successes and revise our assumptions about how we try to protect the life on Earth. Um, because the Gombe story, um, I believe, has huge potential to inform that debate as well. So I hope it's going to be one of those places which we can go for inspiration and for as a reference to better understand how we can change the world for the better. Great. Thank you so much, Lillian. Um, I think we're um, nearly out of time, and uh, I don't see that we've had any questions come in. So I think we're going to um, wrap up our session today. and. Um, for those who are listening, we will be posting a recording of this um, on janegoodall.org um, at our special um, site on um, the website, uh, which you can learn more about Gombe 55 and our celebrations around that. Um, it's janegoodall.org slash Gombe 55. Uh, so you can go there to... Um, see the recording and also learn a lot more about the celebration that we have going on. So um, thank you again, Lillian, for joining us. Really appreciate your time and your insight and um, kind of showing us this other side of Gombe that um, people probably get bits and pieces of here and there, but it's it's really neat to, um, to get the big picture in the context of our Gombe 55 celebration. So Thank you very much for being with us, and uh, thank you to all of our listeners for joining in today as well. Have a great day.